Hello everyone, Subject Zero here. Although there were many reasons not to go back, with recent achievements from the private industry, the moon suddenly became of interest again. Before we dive into the subject, we should ask why we stopped all moon missions in the first place. Most of it had to do with the end of the Soviet era, which in turn made the need to go to the moon sort of obsolete since there was no more reason to burn loads of money just for the sake of proving that capitalism was better than communism. But that is not the entire story. After the Apollo 17 mission, the focus shifted towards the International Space Station and other projects like the Space Shuttle. And then there was the technology aspect, where as soon as they realized that to do anything on the moon, we would need more advanced technology, which at the time was just not available. The obvious choice was to stop all missions and focus on research, which the ISS became the focus. You see, mining the moon has a lot of challenges, in special the low gravity gravity which will make any human or machine work a bit more complex. But now with private industry looking forward to space exploration, suddenly the moon became into light because it offers a few things that we actually need in order to start our own space exploration. It basically comes down to three main things. Rare minerals, helium-3 and fuel station. You probably heard by now that helium-3 is available on the moon's surface and is a very sought after element for many reasons. Helium-3 has a long list of use cases for humanity but among the the top is the use for fusion reactors and medical applications. Since we are far away from fusion, the main reason to mine this element would be for medical stuff. Just as an example, it would be used for the MRI, where helium is used as one of the best cooling elements for these machines. As for space exploration, this element will be extremely important for the future of space missions since the starships of the future will be based either on fission, fusion or antimatter. The role of HE3 is that it would be used as a thermal fusion reactor and it's an element that won't make the reaction radioactive, making it safe for spaceship usage since people would live near the reactor for a long period of time and having something that is not radioactive near you is a good idea. The problem is that in terms of logistics, mining this element will be extremely expensive and the resource is still limited, kind of like fossil fuels which we can expect to end at some point. Nevertheless, the moon would be a good start for this resource, but eventually we would have to look for other places for it. Some early estimates said that there is enough HE3 on the moon to provide fusion energy for the next 10,000 years with 1.1 million metric tons of it in its surface. But then again, fusion reactors are now expected to be around only by 2050, being very optimistic about this tech at all. Another thing that the moon offers in plenty and that will be one of the main arguments for mining the moon are the platinum group metals due to asteroid impacts. However, the quantity that is offered there is still unknown, and estimates are hard to get. But because of the amount of asteroid impacts, scientists are optimistic that the amount available will be larger than what we currently have available on Earth. On the other hand, what we do know is that rare earth metals are set to be depleted on Earth in the next 20 years, and unfortunately, we will need to find other sources to get these metals from. The moon offers the best and easier approach for us to refine our mining technology since not only the moon offers valuable minerals, but asteroids and meteors are on the list to be mined too. Using the moon as a hub to start and refine all of this will offer us alternative ways to get what we need whenever the earth is depleted. And of course, the main reason to go back to the moon by far, it is an optimal location to deploy space missions. The greatest problem that space missions must take into account is fuel. 90% of fuel consumed in any rocket launch mission is used just to get the ship into space. Because of that, every mission starts on Earth and everything needed has to be contemplated or else it won't work. So for every mission, we need to have everything ready and thought about at launch. But what if we could refuel somewhere else? Having a base on the moon and since water was found there, we have an optimal spot to land the spacecraft and refuel for longer missions, such as any mission to Mars, for instance. Now, Mars is not the only place that the moon can help us go to. If a satellite mission was able to refuel, we could dramatically minimize the time it takes for it to get 
anywhere. Let's consider the New Horizons mission, which took about 9.5 years to reach Pluto. If we could refuel, the total time could be shortened to only two years, and instead of doing a flyby, it would actually be able to put the satellite into Pluto's orbit. The idea is fairly simple. We would launch the rocket, which in turn would make its way to the moon, and land itself on a refueling station. Because the moon gravity is much lower in comparison to Earth, or about 16% of Earth's, the escape velocity needed is only 30% of that, or 7,800 meters per second to 2,380 meters per second. Then we need to consider the payload. For every one kilo of payload, you will need only three kilos of propellant, which on Earth you need nine. That is a savings of more than 66% in terms of fuel consumption. And in terms of SpaceX, you would save about 200 to 400,000 anytime you need to refuel. And as a matter of fact, you don't even need to land the ship. With automated rockets, all that you would need to do is just to do a remote request, enter orbit and wait for delivery, which makes things faster and way easier. We can then use the extra fuel to propel any satellite or starship to much faster speeds, and in combination to planetary slingshot, we can reach the larger distance in a much less time. The idea here is that for future missions, instead of taking years to accomplish a very specific thing, we could in turn shorten the time it takes to travel, meaning that we can explore our entire solar system in much less time, and as technology advances, we could colonize everything by the end of the century. But this will only be possible if we can confirm large and readily available water deposits on the moon. The current estimate sits around 100 million to 1 billion metric tons of water available there. These numbers may change once we go back, so take it with a grain of salt. So far, what they found is promising, but only a moon mission to probe the surface will give us a clear picture of what is available. Available. Hence why we need to go back and continue our moon explorations. Not only is it a good idea, but it is necessary for any future space exploration. As you know, by now, exploring space is expensive, and if you can lower the cost of fuel alone, it will be a huge gain. The moon is in no doubt the best initial step for our space endeavors. Alright folks, that's it, we're done here.